and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we are gonna do ourselves a little bit of talking. Got about 20 minutes before my meeting, which means this ain't gonna last 20 minutes. I wanted to take the time to mention a couple of things because, well, first we're gonna talk about the consultation. The fact that some people say they can't afford it. Look, ladies and gentlemen, there isn't anything about affording. It isn't, because most of the information I've already provided on video at one point in time or another. The only thing about the consultations is to get personal. Individuals talk about their personal situation, and so the information is tailored to them. Here's the other thing about the consult you should be aware of, because it's actually very important. Many people, under the impression when they get a consult, they're going to get all of the answers to life problems and they're going to figure out the world and they're going to figure out how to get themselves here and get themselves there and out of this and out of that and around this and through that. That's not what a consult is. A consultation is exactly that, where you you consult someone regarding a particular problem or issue. It's not where they teach you or train you. If I had to sit down and talk with you step by step on how to get through every single problem that you've ever had, that will take weeks, perhaps a half a year at the most. It's too much information. Now go ahead. Listen to how many people talk about too much information in most of the videos that I put out. Okay? It's too much information to be handled in an hour and a half. It's just not possible. That's why it's just a consultation. It's not a mentorship. It's not a class. Oh, I'm so glad we got that taken care of. Now, let's talk about taxes. Do you guys mind if we talk about taxes? I did a video the other day, and a lot of people weren't getting it. So I'm going to tell you this again. Let's do it this way. No, I got a better way to do it. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do the human overflow thing. We're going to ask Kevin. So give me a second. Kevin, comma. Kevin. Too far from the mic, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin. According to the IRS code, Can you please explain how a dependent is defined? Stop listening. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I hadn't refreshed it, so I'm going to have to ask the question again because I forgot to copy it. I, I've been up since 3 o'clock, so that puts me up at 13 straight hours uh, for today, and there's been a lot going on, and so I was tired, y'all. I was tired, so give me a second. Kevin, comma, can you please explain what a dependent is according to the Internal Revenue Code? Question mark. Stop listening. Certainly. In the context of the Internal Revenue Code, IRC, a dependent is a person who meets certain criteria that allows someone else, usually a taxpayer, to claim certain tax benefits. To be considered a dependent, the person must generally meet the following requirements relationship, the person must be a child, stepchild, foster child, sibling, stepsibling, parent, grandparent, or other close relative, or they must live with the taxpayer for the entire year as a member of the taxpayer's household. Support The person must receive more than half of their financial support from the taxpayer. H The person must be younger than the taxpayer and under age 19 at the end of the year, or under age 24 if a full-time student, or permanently and totally disabled. Citizenship or residency the person must be a you. 
ladies and gentlemen, stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, what you guys need to do is understand this. It says that the person must be under the age of 18 or 24 years if they are full time under the age of 19. Please understand, your wife is listed as a dependent. She's a spouse, so she's counted as a dependent because you take care of her. So there is no way in the world. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys didn't see that uh, that military term they used. Let's see, where is that military term? There it is, right there. There's the military term, generally. Okay. Now, watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Kevin, I was always taught that a spouse can be a dependent. Taught that a spouse can be a dependent. Taught that a spouse. Stop listening. Now he wants to really be stupid. Stop listening. He wants to really be stupid, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the system messing with me. Yeah, I thought it was us, but I, I ain't never had to sell spouse a day in my life. So I'm going to shut this down and restart it because I need my dragon. How to train your dragon. And my dragon and I, we, we got some work to do. In some cases, a spouse can be considered a dependent for tax purposes. If the spouse does not have a gross income for the year and meets certain other criteria, they... Hey, just shut up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand, go and look at your IRS 1040 and see that there is no place to put your spouse as a dependent. So you can add your spouse as a dependent. A lot of people have been hearing me say this, but you'll go to a tax agent, and the tax agent will tell you, no, you can't. I am not the tax guy, but I learned this stuff from Maxine Waters, okay? That was one of the things she taught me and a group in her class when I was 15 and a half years old. It was a mandatory class. We could not be in her work program without going to this class. And this is what I've known since the time I was 15, just like the taxpayer. A taxpayer is a dependent. Watch this. Uh-oh. Well, of course a taxpayer is a dependent. So watch what I'm going to ask him. i got to start my, my how to start your dragon when you find the icon. Hold on one second while dragon uh, pulls up. And the reason why I can't type now because of that right there. Um, Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't get there in time. No, no if you are filing as head of household, you cannot claim yourself as a dependent on your tax return. This is because the head of household filing status is specifically for taxpayers who are supporting a qualifying dependent, such as a child or other family member. However, you may be eligible to claim a personal exemption Wait. for yourself on your tax return, which reduces your taxable income. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Let me explain this to you. 
Okay, watch this. It says, if you're filing as head of household, you cannot claim yourself as a dependent on your tax return. That's a lie because you are taking, your, taking care of yourself. Pay attention. That is because head of household filing status is specifically for taxpayers who are supporting a qualified dependent, such as a child or family member. Uh-uh. If I am caring for myself, then I am de a dependent. And watch what I do to him, stupid mother. You are incorrect. Comma. As head of household. Comma. I take care of myself. Comma, and a dependent is anyone who is dependent on my person for care for greater than six months out of the year. Period. As a taxpayer, that is one capacity. As head of household, that is another capacity. And as a married person, another capacity. A child is another capacity. Comma, but you are aware of this, so why are you trying to mislead me? Question mark. Stop listening. Oh, I forgot to turn on the mic. You are correct that as the head of household, you may claim a personal exemption for yourself and may also claim an exemption for any dependents you support, including yourself if you meet the criteria for being a dependent. To qualify as a dependent, you must meet the dependency tests outlined in the in Shut up. We ain't got to meet no tests. The code don't give us no tests. But I want you to see, I apologize for the confusion of my previous response. You are correct that as head of household, you may claim a blah, blah. Nobody's talking about a personal exemption. But as any dependent you support, ladies and gentlemen, you support yourself, you support your wife. Those are separate capacities. Those are not, you guys can't look at it as you as a person and you fit all of those criteria. You've got to understand the changing hat doctrine, okay? You see it in all of the stupid shows. You saw it in I Love Lucy. You saw it in the Three Stooges where the guy is the bellhop. He's the the manager of the hotel, he is a guest in the hotel, he's the mayor, he's the sheriff, he's everything. Okay? It is the different capacities, the different hats. And once you understand that even with judges, they wear two hats. Remember, the president has two capacities. Commander-in-chief of the armed forces, which is not a civilian position, and as the president of the United States, a civilian position. Remember, the military has no jurisdiction over civilians. So the president cannot operate over civilians while in the capacity as commander-in-chief. When he does it over civilians, it's because it's martial law. Okay. Now, do you see what I mean about how long this would take to explain all of this and the details and how we got here? So when I did the video earlier explaining to people about how we're going to be on the SACCOM web channel from now on talking about taxes. We're not going to do it on this one. Showing you guys who your dependents are. Yes, going exempt six months out of the year. That's what Maxine taught us. I'm, I'm going to give her her credit. Six months out of the year and then for the rest of six months claiming three dependents. I didn't, <laughs> she had already had the number and everything. I didn't do that. And here it is. I was claiming myself as a dependent at the age of 16 because my mother wasn't claiming me on her taxes. So I claimed myself as a dependent. I claimed myself as head of household. How, did I, how could I claim myself as head of household and I'm still living in her house? Because I was the male taking charge, taking control, head of household. And because I was taking care of myself since 15, I had to buy my own clothes, buy my own food. That was me. That was the agreement she and I had. Brothers and sisters didn't know about it. You say this to them to this day, and they will tell you it's not true because, well, as my mother used to tell, my mother and father used to tell them all the time when they would ask them about me. Well, why did he get to do that? Because he's different. I, I remember that like it was yesterday, my mother saying, because he's different, okay? He's not like the rest of you. 
seriously. I'm not joking. She wasn't trying to say that I was special. She was trying to say that it didn't work the same. The personalities weren't the same. It wasn't the same situation with me and with them. It was different because my mindset was different. My mindset has always been different, and it will continue to be different. Ladies and gentlemen, I got less than seven minutes to get ready for this meeting. I am so glad I took the time. I wasn't planning on doing this. I wasn't planning on giving him to show you what a dependent is and how you can claim head of household. Go ahead. Talk to your tax preparer. Go ahead. Ask him if you can claim yourself as head of household as a taxpayer because you're the filer. So those are two dependents or deductions, people. And as a dependent, head of household, taxpayer, and dependent. If you're married, your wife, she's your spouse. That's one capacity. And you take care of her because you live in the same house. That's another capacity. That's five capacities. Just between you and your spouse. Then your children, they're dependent. Ah. Huh? Okay? And then you get a deduction for each of them. Do your taxes right, people. Stop doing your taxes according to what somebody else is telling you. Don't listen to what I'm telling you. You've got the software right here. They, they put it out here for you guys. God, you don't understand. Stupid Kevin should start calling him that. Stupid Kevin, from now on, go there, ask the question, but you've got, you got to understand. He's going to tell you stuff like this, and it's going to sound like it's 100% true. No, if you are following head of household, you cannot claim yourself as a dependent on your tax return. And then he gives an explanation. So the next time he does that, say, hey, give me the code that supports what you just said. He cannot. That's why he talks about personal exemptions. As head of household, that's not personal. You are now over everybody, so that's not personal. That's the head of the entire house. But who's head over me? Well, I am, because I take care of myself. And I'm a part of the house, so I'm head over myself. Man, I'm head over heels, okay? My hope is that some of you have gotten what I said. So this is the type of stuff we go over in our consults. As a matter of fact, there's a guy who takes me to and from my medical appointments, and we have this conversation. And he tells me, but man, I can't seem to get it. And I'm like, that's because you're thinking the way they have been teaching people as opposed to thinking about it. Ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do is think about it. Okay? So this video is going to be called Think about this the next time you're following your taxes. All right? Hey, I got to go. Y'all take care. I'm out.